Honorable Dean Janice Pereira, Chief Justice, Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court, Justice Barry Leon, our own Justice, um, Justice Barry Leon of the High Court of the Virgin Islands Commercial Court Division of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court. Good morning. I want to welcome all of you to the DVI International Arbitration Conference. Trust me, I'm not going to be long. <coughs> I'm Russell Hannigan, the managing editor of Business DVI and the convener of today's conference. More than a year ago, Don Smith, I show most of you know Don, the general counsel at the DVI Financial Services Commission, and I started a conversation about hosting an arbitration conference here in the BVI as the jurisdiction entree into the global arbitration space. Given this business BVI's mission of promoting the territory's allocation for global business and investment, we saw it as a natural fit and progression, progression to add to our conference's agenda. I believe Dawn was more convinced that we were quite serious about doing this event after she attended and participated actually in our first regional Asia conference in Hong Kong last September. Needless to say, the rest is history. Arranging such a conference obviously takes more than my time and those this time to the staff at the office. And I, and I must say, there are a number of persons that I immediately want to thank um, for their help. We receive great enthusiasm both from the local and international arbitration community. And I, to be honest, I can't remember anyone saying we are not interested in your crazy idea. At the risk of leaving someone out, I want to say thanks to a few persons and entities in particular for their strong support in making this possible. The lead among them is Justice Barry Leon, if I can say he's not so new anymore, but a new commercial court judge in the BVI, for his ideas and, and many suggestions. I am sure we easily shared more than 100 emails back and forth at different times of the day. I, I also want to thank our uh, Chief Justice who accepted our invitation, not only speedily, but with great enthusiasm. Our Premier, for all who's taken time to attend our conferences, be they locally or overseas for that matter, and Lord Goldsmith, although I think he's not here yet, for staying on after last night's lecture. I can't go on without thanking our sponsoring partners, um, without whom today would be nothing but a dream. Hanyas, Dylan Chairman, Hanyas, and BBI Finance. Last but in no way least, I want to thank our many speakers, local and overseas. To our many overseas speakers, a special welcome is in order to you, and I honestly hope that your trek to the BVI was not too difficult, although I heard someone was coming in up in St. Croix. Uh, for those of you who had a difficult trek, the Premier, who happens not only to be Minister of Finance and Premier, was also the Minister of Tourism, and I myself as duty at the Tourist Board as Chairman, We'd be happy to talk to you at a coffee break. <clears throat> we chose a conference theme, New Horizons of Opportunity, deliberately, as we saw the BVI's entry into the global arbitration space as an area of significant opportunity for the BVI. However, as any new venture, we as a territory must invest time, resources, and a long-term commitment if we are to realize the potential returns. We look forward to an exciting day of discussions and debate as to what the BVI must do if it is to be successful in this new venture. Lord Goldsmith in his presentation last night, I think, made and laid a very solid foundation for what we need to be doing. And today, it is our challenge to, to build on that foundation. I thank you. And at this point, it gives me great pleasure to invite the Honorable Premier, Dr. D. Orlando Smith, to deliver his remarks. Dr. Smith. Thank you, Russell, and good morning, everyone. I'd like to especially recognize, of course, the just Janice Perry, the Justice of the Supreme Court, and also the Honorable Chief um, Justice Leon. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this conference and to explore 
New Horizons of Opportunities for International Arbitration. Let me begin by commending the organizers, Oyster Global Marketing and Sponsors, Corneas, Army BBI Beacon and Government Agencies, BBI Finance, along with the BBI International Arbitration Center, for their diligence in planning this event at this time. Your collective efforts reflect the spirit of partnership that has built this Puritan industry and it helped us to navigate the challenges we continue to face in financial services. This is a type of continued partnership and collective strength of the basis in good stead as we cement our position as a leader in this area of financial services. This perfect system event has taken place is that what I would call a crossroad for international financial services. This crossroad came as a result of the challenges brought on by the emerging regulatory environment, increased competition from all corners of the globe, and other market forces that have changed the financial services landscape. It is for this reason that my government commissioned a strategic review of our financial services industry to develop a pragmatic strategy and implementation plans that will chart a new direction for our financial services industry. You see, we are committed to taking the needed steps to diversify and strengthen our financial services sector. Almost one month ago, on April 23rd, I announced the establishment of the Financial Services Implementation Unit in the Premier's Office to deliver the top 10 priority recommendations coming out of the plan. This unit is well on its way to executing these critical recommendations. One of these recommendations focuses on enhancing our offerings with value-added services within the framework of more substantive financial services products. Hence this move today for the development of our arbitration services and establishing the British Virgin Islands as an international arbitration centre. I would therefore like to refer to this event as one event in a perfect form of opportunities for the BBI. Here's why. We have begun the implementation of the recommendation of the Financial Services Consultancy with arbitration services as a top priority. We have a new judge at the Commercial Court with unparalleled qualification and experience in arbitration. We are the global offshore leader in international business companies the feeder to arbitration opportunities. And we have a stellar reputation as a commercial court that is a world-class dispenser of commercial justice. With all of these attributes of the BBI and the financial services and jurisdiction, the community spell of success in branding our reputation for international arbitration. We began this journey on September 11, 2011, when a focus group was established to review and recommend a proper arbitration regime in the British Virgin Islands. The influencing factors for this decision, including consideration of the pivotal role of the territory in matters concerning international trade and commerce, especially with regards to the large number of business companies incorporated or established in the territory. We also took into account the need to position the BBI as an international centre for the settlement of commercial disputes as a way to expand the territory service industry. This is because we understood that a growing number of high network and sophisticated business men and women prefer the ease and confidentiality that mediation and arbitration offer. I take this opportunity to contribute to our founding chairman of the focus group, the late Dr. Joseph Archibald QC. This larger than life legend of the BBI legal fraternity contributed his passion, legal wisdom, and vast legal experience to the development of arbitration in the territory. This is superseded me by his herculean contribution to the legal profession in the BBI and beyond. His common presence and wise counsel are sorely missed by many of us, both personally and professionally. Let us honor Dr. Archibald's legacy by making the BBI the International Dispute Resolution Center of Choice. With the same focus that we have been equipped 
are the financial services jurisdiction of choice. In so doing, we would continue to secure a better future for our living and working in the Virgin Islands. We know that the use of commercial arbitration as a means of dispute resolution is increasing daily. We can almost say that arbitration and other forms of dispute resolution are the world's commercial court. This growth trend will continue as the advantages of arbitration are based on the natural evolution of justice. In addition, arbitration makes the dispensation of justice quicker, cheaper, more efficient, fairer, easier, and less confrontational. These are all very attractive benefits for any person or institution and will ensure the continued growth of arbitration. But how do we achieve this? Well, we have created the World Class Legal Framework for the Arbitration Bill 2013. Future legislation is as compliant with the New York Convention, which allows for enforceability in other jurisdictions of arbitration awards made in the BBI. This is supported by a known and trusted legal framework to guide the process of settling disputes. We have also established the International Arbitration Center, called the BBI IAC, to provide support and facilitate BBI arbitration and mediation proceedings. Its main functions are to provide facilities and essential dispute resolution services for the conduct of arbitral and mediation proceedings in the BBI. Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to announce that the BBI as an arbitration center is open for business. It is said that a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And today we have taken that step. We also recognize that more must be done for the center to realize its full potential. For example, we know that immigration and labor reform are necessary to help position the BVI as an attractive arbitration center. Globalization is at our doorstep and ever present in modern arbitration industry. We must therefore consider the parties to arbitration and arbiters, including experts, marriage day from any part of the world, and we have to facilitate this dynamic. Plans to address these and many other issues related to the wide expansion and diversification of our financial services are being formulated as we speak. In another example, in addition to establishing the Financial Services Implementation Unit on April 23rd, I also announced a number of standing, of standing committees to provide technical and expert support. These are in place and working. Two such committees are focused on labor and immigration, along with infrastructure, and they are critically reviewing our policies and procedures as they examine these issues. And I'm pleased to report that they are quite advanced in their deliberations to produce plans to address the identified challenges. Efficient access is yet another vital component to our financial services enhancement strategy. And the planned expansion of the Terrence B. Letson International Airport is anticipated to greatly support the International Arbitration Center, as well as many of the other services we are considering that value to our financial services product offerings. As you can see, this government is making great progress to strengthen and diversify this industry. I'm confident that the multitude of talent assembled here will be the wings upon which our developing arbitration center will soar. I assure you that the government of the Virgin Islands is 100% committed to making the territory a jurisdiction of choice for international arbitration. My government understands the importance of opening doors of opportunity for people to provide many of the many ancillary services needed to support this branch and other areas of the financial services. We recognize and support the dynamic fundamental synergy between the international arbitration sector and the international business sector. Over the coming months, we will continue to build on the excellent foundation we have built in partnership with the private sector. Our Financial Services Institute and the BBI Finance will be working closely with the Arbitration Center to build the human capital resource and marketing promotion services 
respectively interval of the application center. Let me close by taking this opportunity to thank everyone who has worked in partnership with the government to make our entry into this arena successful thus far. This includes the members of the focus group for their leadership, former High Court Judge Justice Edward Bannister, QC, and Mr. Jeffrey Erkinson, President of the Charter Institute of Arbitrage, for their guidance and assistance in the deliberations of the focus group. There have been many others who have, in some way, helped us to lay a solid foundation upon which to stand so we can get a clear view of the new horizons of opportunities in arbitration. I wish you a productive conference and look forward to learning of the plan of action that will come out of today's deliberation. I thank you very much.